us Americans are dealing with an interesting time period in the history of the food industry. On one side, we have the health conscious and local, and on the other, we have the overly commoditized, commercialized, and stripped mostly of any health benefit. Whether it's a restaurant or a grocery store, like all things now, we are an ever increasingly polarized society, and where your taste fall on the spectrum that is the modern food parade, for many of us, falls upon where you are with your own health and your own personal awareness. Let's be honest here, we're raised in a gluttonous, never-ending dirge of fast food, convenient noise, and it's literally killing us by the millions every year. And that's exactly where a place like 716 Fresh becomes so vitally important. It offers a choice and a better alternative when it could not be more important to have one. So I started the business about six, a little over six years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, at the time I was just finishing up school uh, for physical therapy and um, I was working at the YMCA and between the two, I, I was seeing um, clients at the YMCA and patients and physical therapy that didn't know how to cook, uh, didn't want to cook, right. couldn't cook, you know, whatever it might be. Um, and then some, some of the children who said, um, my parents are older and they shouldn't cook right. they're by themselves and they're not eating. So I, I saw a perfect opportunity to um, kind of reach everyone, whatever you fit in, however you fit into that, and um, started kind of cooking on the side by myself. We started renting a um, kitchen in a church, mm -hmm. and that kind of took off from there. You know, we started just doing a couple pickups a week, and then, um, you know, people wanted something every day. Wow. So we, we eventually, you know, moved out to... Um, the Seneca location about a year ago because more people were interested in just hopping in and grabbing something because they forgot to order or they wanted some more options like the smoothies or, or sandwiches. Sure. Stuff. So now one of the things too that I see all the time, uh, you know, I've been doing these business profiles for a long time. Even then the other show, we were doing a video version of this, um, but the organic nature of what you just described to me uh, is those are the best businesses. You know what I mean? Because you didn't just say, yeah. well, I'm going to open up this business. You There was already a, a need for it and you were fulfilling a need off, the, you know, right on the get go of this. But then it grew organically because people started ordering from you. Uh, and then one thing led to another and then you opened up your business. And I think just it's not it's uh, the experiential nature of having that. Uh, grow with you, I think is important instead of just saying, okay, I'm going to open up this business turnkey. I've never done this before. <laughs> right. Uh, exactly. You know, yeah. Yeah. You already have. Yeah, it was, it, you know, it was, it was funny because I was kind of in the boat of, uh, you know, the same boat as all the people, you know, there was times where I didn't want to go. There was times I was, I was, you know, doing homework or working or working out and I didn't have time to cook or um, didn't want to cook, whatever it might be. So, like I kind of fell into that, um, the group where this benefited me. So I, I would make a bunch of meals while I was doing it okay. and, um, I would have something for myself so I wouldn't have to do this every single day. And, and that's kind of what became popular, um, around the same time that I started, you know, more, more meal prep places started popping up because, you know, a lot of people started working out and they wanted something, uh, to, to eat that's healthier and, um, prepared already for them so they can just eat it up and eat. Uh, well, and, and that's, same thing with the work a lot too. You know, they, they're busy, didn't have time. Right. And that's, the, well, I started doing that too. When I lived out West, I started making a Sunday meal. This was what I called it. And then I would parlay that into five or six meals during the week, whether it was lunches or dinners. <clears throat> and so I'd have my Sunday and then I would freeze or refrigerate, you know, the rest. And sometimes it would be a meal that I could add something additional to throughout the week if I got really bored with it. But, and it was something that when I would bring it up to people, a lot of people were doing that now just because we're so busy and you want to eat healthy. And that's the thing that, you know, uh, we should focus on with this too, is that your food, you're not just making you know, quick food, you're making really healthy food that people can take with them and, and eat quickly. It's not, um, it's something that I was real cognitive of when I was doing that. And I started bringing it up to people, uh, just in the course of my day. And it turned out that a lot of people were doing that. So I can testify to that, you know, that you're right. A lot of people, uh, will, you know, take that initiative themselves, but it's a lot of work. You know. Yeah, it really, it really is, and yeah, I touched on the point about the healthy, um, the healthy part as well. You know, we 
the ingredients that you use have to be are very important. You know, we, we start from scratch. We start with the farmers and, and make sure we know where that food is coming from. And then um, once we get it, we make sure that we use it in the right ways. Um, right. And then it goes to you, and then it goes out to the consumer. So you know, from from the time it's grown to the time it gets to your plate, you know, it's it's all overseen, and it's not something that's in a commercial setting where um, you're not not growing the food in a lab and then getting sent out to a commercial kitchen where they're just blasting out tons of meals like this is this is homegrown and it's um you know a small small business yeah and well that's huge and it's huge that it's healthy it's homemade and it's local right yeah. that's a really big deal and we're starting to i think see more and more of that um peppered throughout like the consumer landscape so to speak because it's a need that has got to be filled because you can't just keep pumping garbage into people you can't and look at look at the price that we're all paying now you know i mean for that um, exactly so, exactly and, and that was your gig anyway so you were a physical therapist correct yeah so i started um after i started my business while I was in school, but I didn't actually get it going until like the day I graduated. It's kind of when I was like, all right, I'm going to do this, but I still did physical therapy. On the side. Right. Um, so wait, but, but so you got a degree in physical therapy, correct? That was your degree, right? Yeah. yeah. But you started the food business when you graduated with a physical therapy degree. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I kind of was, I, I didn't want to mess up, um, you know, studying and all that stuff. I'm going to wait till there until after my uh, board exam sure sure I actually focus on it um so yeah but i i enjoyed both you know i enjoyed the company of the, the clientele i had and the patients i had mm -hmm. um and you know that i just as we were talking more and more you realize wow these people really could benefit from this sure sure uh cory can you give me a call back right there's a our connection keeps dropping yeah yeah absolutely. just get, yeah give me a call right back okay all right bye-bye Okay, you there? Yeah. All right. Oh, that's better. Okay. I don't know what happens. Sometimes it's just uh, whose phone? Who knows? Gotcha. Uh, yeah. Um, so what you're doing, though, so you, you already had um, a kind of the mentality because you going into physical therapy. You were probably, I'm sure, you were already very healthy yourself. You were probably, the food that you're making now, is it like the food that you were making for yourself to a degree? Yeah, yeah. I, um uh, I'm Italian, so we we made a lot of Italian dishes, and I still do a lot of that. But um, I, I've always had like this um, thing for like healthier healthier meals and right. and using the, the local local ingredients. Um, I, I try to find something that's in season to you know to make as well. Oh, that's huge! So yeah, you're also using the seasonality of the food, which is the way it was done for hundreds of years, thousands, well, forever, really, since we crawled out of the swamps. It was just a matter of the consumer side of the industry, the megalists, that right, that were just basically pushing this consumer grade uh, food on us that was out of season, you know. And, and you know, there's a huge movement too, because not everything should be in season all the time, right? Right. I mean, yep, exactly. Uh, so uh, when you, so you're a, so I this. This is kind of off the cuff, but um, so I'm Italian myself. My family, uh, my dad's side is Italian. My mom's is like a, a mix of Northern European. Uh, but on my dad's side, it, it, we ate predominantly like an Italian American uh, menu, basically. And but it was so unhealthy. So you just said you were kind of already predisposed, and I was too. So I, we have that in common because I always, even when I was a kid, I always craved more healthy food. Um, mm -hmm. and then you, you just kind of eat wrong <laughs> because that's the nature of where you are. Right. right. Yeah. So how, did you combat that in a way when you were younger? Did you like find a way, like, how did you navigate through that? Cause I didn't, honestly, I got swallowed whole by it. I, I think I was just, I was very active when I was younger. Um, you know, I, I ran a lot. I ran track across country okay. and I had uh, five brothers. So we were always, uh, you know, playing sports and then stuff. So, so you were, no I matter think, what you ate, you were burning it, right? Yeah, I, I'm pretty like tall and skinny, so like we were we were pretty active, and I burned a lot of that off. So I don't think it really affected me that much. But even now, you know, I 
just changing some things like um for example we just switched our our oil we used in olive oil from italy uh, but found out some you know they weren't using 100 percent olive oil so we found another distributor that used um olive oil from california and it's very pure and there's no msg and there's no um, added chemicals or added uh, ingredients it's just the oil and it's a healthy option um so just changing some of those things we you know we sometimes will switch our regular pasta for a uh honey pasta or a chickpea pasta and you know it's not the exact same but right. but just switching some of those things um really make a difference for for you your body as well. Oh yeah, they make a huge difference. I, I just learned that a few years ago about the olive oils. I didn't realize that that industry is kind of really sneaky with how yeah, they'll, yeah. Uh, they'll grade things or they'll distribute or market things. And you're like, wait a second, this isn't why. And you know, people are purchasing that generally for a reason. And a lot of times right. it is for the healthier option. But a lot of times, it, you know, granted, even at its base, you're still getting a healthier option other than you know with the canolas or the sunflower oils or something. Yes, but yes. It, it's not. You know, you think that you're getting this really healthy option when, in fact, when it's that, um, I don't know what the, the word would be, but when it's that uh, uh, corroded, Some let's of say. polluted. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're just like, well, this isn't the product that I thought it was. So that's awesome that you found that and you can do that. So it's a real pure strain of olive oil is what you're saying. It's like, yeah, was yeah. it the first press, cold press, that type of thing? Comfort. Yep. Yep. Exactly. And, yeah. and you know, changing. Um, you know, we do a lot of red sauce. Uh, you know, Sundays always get sauce, mm -hmm. and um, you know, that's going to be a healthier option than having your like uh, fettuccine Alfredo, some like Alfredo. You know, that yeah. that's good once in a while, but just changing it up and having the red sauce. It, Right. It's going to be a healthier option. So, so now yeah, when, when you started, moderation. did you have like dishes that you were like, let's say like a, a three or four dishes that you were making initially, or was it a wide variety of stuff, you know, like when you were cooking in the church kitchen, when you first started yeah. this? So we've always kind of had a menu that changes every week. Um, usually, usually like seven or eight options that change weekly. And we kind of had the base options. People really like um like just like a regular salad or a basic chicken and and we've always had those but every week it's something different you know we, we try to rotate our items like this taco bowl we have is a really popular uh -huh. item and we try to do it like once a month um, chicken parm like that's popular and we try to have that like once a month wow. but um yeah the, i think people like the um the options that's something different every week and it's 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 good for us too because then we use up different ingredients and again we we try to use what's local and what's in season so it's we're not stuck on having the same menu every week we can actually um, it, be more creative sure sure well and there's the duality of 716 you know because <laughs> it's literally 716 a lot of times yes. right yeah. so i mean that's yeah. something that people should be aware of <laughs> that's just not a exactly. name i mean you're really like standing behind this and you're really walking the walk right uh exactly. and that's and that's what it's about for you it's about having these healthier options uh making sure that this food is ready well you know what i love about it is that you're the nature of having the deli and even before because you had those uh, uh, coolers up front where people could just walk in and grab something too correct so that yes, was that was yeah. already a component of your business right but mm -hmm. having that option now is vitally important you know and uh i don't i haven't even said this to anybody but i think i told you did i tell you that i had open heart surgery right in august did i tell you that yeah i think you did yeah, yeah so i had a five yeah. bypass right and i wasn't i didn't look much different than i do now but it was just i had been eating the wrong foods for a long time i was already predisposed to high cholesterol heart disease and through the, the pandemic was just like the death knell for me because it just i was sedentary i was editing tv shows right and i did and you were you worked in a restaurant i mean you you had a lot of stress you you told me about those times you were working late nights didn't sleep much i mean that, that adds to it as well yeah yeah I, wow. I learned to sleep four hours a night and uh it was probably the worst thing i could have done for myself because uh, i would sleep it sometimes even three and i would work all day every day and then you're eating the wrong food all day right so you're just yeah. contributing to this like uh exponential development in your body that some at some point you're going to pay the price for right yeah all that together really uh, uh you know it it comes together. I mean, if you change one thing at a time, then you're 
you're starting to go in the right direction. Sure. Yeah. Now, and the ironic thing was, is that, you know, I was a vegan and a vegetarian, but that doesn't mean anything, (laughs) you know, it's that if you're not going to put in the time to eat the healthier options, you can still eat poorly as a vegan and a vegetarian. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and I think that's what something a lot of, it's a misnomer. A lot of people don't realize. I think that that just automatically means that you're just eating a healthier diet and living a healthier life, but you're not. There's still a lot of, uh, French fries are vegan, (laughs) French fries are vegan, but you know, that's not the healthiest option. Yeah. 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 (laughs) Just because you're not eating an animal doesn't mean you're, yeah. And I think that's, uh, something that needs to be noted here as well. So now you started out with, uh, the, the dishes that you were making in the church and then uh, you basically were getting more and more requests for this for your food right and so you yeah. moved you to open up a lo- physical location yeah we actually we've, we've kind of take a couple turns as well we we uh a little bit after we started we had been reached out by some schools and we were doing some uh school so food service for schools so we're like um I guess you can call it like the lunch ladies okay. of the school and then um, catering as well. We, we we were doing catering back at the church. We had some on-site catering and we did some off-site catering, some wow. weddings and, um, you know, holiday parties. And that kind of expanded as well. So we do a lot of catering now and um, still do the school, school food service. And, uh, yeah, so it's just uh, there's a lot of different avenues and it's it's exciting yeah, sure. Uh, how, we have. how did you grow it uh, from an entrepreneurial standpoint when you were in the kitchen? I mean, was it all word of mouth and people started just eating the food and they loved it? And one thing led to another and people just started passing your number around? Or did you actually go out and physically try to market it a little bit? No, it's a, a lot of word of mouth and it still is. You know, uh, you know, there are some free services that, you know, like Facebook and Instagram and, and whatnot and, you know, small um uh, you know, small things that, that I can go out and do, but sure. I, I don't really advertise much. It's mostly, mostly word of mouth, and that's the best part too, because people really tell you how they feel. You know, they go out there and say, oh, "This is the best thing I have." I mean, I had a, a customer come in today. She's um, like seventy-five, and and she comes every week and buys like three or four meals. And she's like, "I have not had a bad meal yet," and she. Wow. She's like, thank you so much because I don't cook, you know, right. I should be eating more, but the four meals that I get a week really helps me out so I don't have to cook. So, you know, stuff like that where, you know, even if um, we can help her out with just dinners, you know, that's something that's, that's what I like to hear. Yeah, well, I mean, that's your business, and these people really yeah. value what you do. I mean, you're giving them – I mean, there's – it's almost an intimate transaction with food. When it's, you know what I mean? Like, it's not, you're not going to the grocery store and buying a prepackaged meal. You're buying a meal from a person who made your food, right? So right. you're dealing with, there's an intimacy to that, and there's a trust uh, to that in that situation. And you're really trying to provide an alternative, right? A healthy option, but it's got to taste good. Right. I mean, that's exactly. the bottom line. Like nobody's going to, I, that's the other problem too. A lot of times when people immediately, you know, if a doctor tells you, Oh, you got to change your diet. The first thing you think is that food, the enjoyment of food is going to diminish <laughs> very quickly right. in your life. But that doesn't have to be the case. You just have to educate yourself. Uh, and we're a lazy culture. We, we, you know, we've been stepwardized into, uh, eating's turned into a commodity. Exactly. You know, it's yeah. Just, and it's for you you're fighting the good fight because you're making healthy food and you're also trying to compete with you know the chains of the world uh and so you're trying to provide this food and that's what i think is important to make maybe we should talk about the deli a little bit more because you're providing that uh you're expediting you know their their food to them but it's a great healthy option right you know? yeah i i think touching on the you know, the healthy option part, you know, people, I still get people come in that say, oh, I just went to the dietitian or I went to the doctor and they said I need to get a healthy. And, you know, for me, I, I think people that I got to just gnaw on some carrots or I got to eat a, <laughs> right. a head of raw lettuce, like that's, that's healthy. No, like it doesn't have to be that. You no, know, you can have, um, you can still have ice cream. You can still have these, you know, um, cravings. It's just, and, in smaller portions or portion controlled, you know, it's, it's not that you have to just go 
from eating what you're eating to again just eating carrots raw like that's 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 too fat that's too fast you need to slow down you need to, to enjoy it you need to, if you don't enjoy it then uh, you're not going to make that change exactly well and we're not you know that the world has changed right in the past you would eat to live right you know with sustenance on a really base level you would work 12 hours a day and you'd get a meal you know, and there wasn't snacking. There really wasn't much of a lunch. You know, it, it's we've become so used to the quickness and the uh, just to get satiated when we have a craving, right? So you know, you exactly. have to think you're indoctrinated into this food system, into these food cycles on a daily basis, where you're like, oh, I'm craving this, you know, flavor. I want these cheese chips, and you're gonna go get the cheese chips because you can find them within a mile in 10 different places right exactly. so that's yeah. you know and that's the problem and that's when i saw your place i was like thank god something like that went in there because it's really needed you know the more of those that we have the better and somebody's got to like kick it off and you're uh, you're pretty much seminal in this industry aren't you i mean there's not many others like you yeah there um there's not too many there's been more that popped up the last couple of years um but n nothing exactly the same you know we try we pride ourselves on have, being a little different from other you know sure. like you said using local using organic um having that home style favorites and and not being all about um, not not making it bland or boring sure, you know? sure. so we, we try to have try to have something different and also you know doing the smoothies and having the deli so no matter what what's your reason for coming in you're gonna find something to like yeah you know, so if you're it, hungry for lunch you can get a deli sandwich if, you're, right. if you just came from a workout you can get a smoothie if you're hungry for dinner you can get a sandwich you can get a sandwich or you can get a, a meal and then what type of meals uh do you have predominantly uh, you have uh, beef and chicken and yeah we we try to do a, a variety of different options usually like 30 different options in our cooler daily we'll do like chicken beef um shrimp haddock or or some type of salmon right and then um i try to have some vegetarian and vegan options for people as well and then it you said it changes every week too right so yeah but. yeah stuff in our cooler changes daily and then the, the ordering online will be uh, a different menu every week right right now you also have sit down in there too it's something people should know as well so you have uh the back because i went and you had that nice back room there with the longer table and some side tables correct yeah, yeah. We have our patio is open now as well. We have a patio where you can come out and sit for lunch. Um, we have a, a nice dining area in the bar area where you can just sit. If yeah. you're just stopping in for something quick or, um, you know, you can heat up your meals and stay a while. Yeah, it's a great location and it's a really, it's a beautiful spot for you. And I think that the way that you utilize that pre-existing business, because it was a tavern before, uh, so you basically utilized, like, the, you didn't really change anything in the interior, I think. Uh, but, no, yeah, it was pretty much, it was, it's, it, it, it was pretty much set up and, and looked great. We just, you know, we changed the, the bar area to a smoothie bar area kind of right. Right. Um, so let's jump back a little bit. So, uh, so you're in the church kitchen. People are passing the word around, and then you. What led you to that specific location? I mean, was it just happenstance? You were just like passing by one day. You saw a for sale sign, and you just. I mean, how did you end up in, in that particular spot? So I, um, I, I was kind of looking for something that wasn't the same as everything else you know again with these other meal prep companies or um, other companies that are similar to us i want them to be a little different right. a lot of these places are in um commercial buildings or they're in strip um, plazas like right strip. yeah yeah exactly strip plazas or uh, or whatnot so i wanted to have it a diff different atmosphere so we're in a building and you've been there you you know it's kind of like a rustic feel it yep. kind of goes with with what we're all about and, and that's just something different you know you walk in you would never think you know it, it used to be a, a fancy restaurant so you you get a different feel when you walk in rather than going into some place that has just white walls and they have a cooler right in the middle with some food 
right. you know, this is something different. Yeah, it totally differentiates you, actually. And it, you're kind of an anomaly uh, as well because you're not just uh, – you just don't walk into this little strip plaza, you know, coolered <laughs> place. And it's, yeah. Because that, that always kind of screws with my head too because you're trying – you know, a lot of these food prep companies, they don't focus it. There's nothing healthier about them. You know, it's just the convenience of having the food prepared, right? Right, yeah. Yep, exactly. So you're making a huge difference, uh, you know, with uh, having pre-prepared healthy food sourced locally. You know, the owner, you're generally uh, most of the times there. So it's just, it's a different experience. You can sit down. Now you've got the deli. In the deli, you put right up in front where the front counter was, or did you move, is it along that back wall where the coolers were? No, nope, it's in the it's in the front. Yeah, it's it's pretty much where you saw before right. with the movies there. So you, nice. once you come in, you'll see it right away. Okay. So now, if we so you're open uh, daily from when to when? So we're open uh, Monday through Wednesday, eleven to six p.m. Friday from eleven to four p.m. And then Sunday we're open from eight to two. Okay. Nice. And if somebody wanted catering, what's the window on something like that for you? So catering, we try to ask for, um, if it's a bigger event, we try to ask for at least a week, especially with some, um, you know, being short staffed and everything going on with um, supplies, we try to ask for a little bit longer. Um, But that doesn't mean we can't accommodate at a shorter time. We would just have you reach out and we can let you know. Okay, awesome. And ask for you, of course, Corey. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then now, so did one, uh, so, you know, it was like what led uh, the horse to water. Was it basically like for local sourcing, you were doing this before the pandemic. So was that your idea that you were going to try to get as much as you could locally sourced or did that just kind of happen because it kind of works with this healthy prep idea? I, I don't know. I, I always, um, had that idea. I've always, um, you know, I was always going to the farmer's market, and then, you know, Wednesday, for example, like Easter was right down the road. So I go to the farmer's market on Wednesday and then start prepping food on Thursday or Friday. Right. So that stuff would be the freshest. Um, and, you know, it just kind of took off from there, you know, using it's all about, like we said before, from the time it's grown to the time it goes to the plate, like it's all seen by me or, or the farmer. And, and it's, it's kind of like a small circle rather than, you know, some, some big um, corporation or, um, you know, these big firms, and then it gets shipped out and it sits in a warehouse for a couple of days and then it gets shipped out again and then, then it gets to a kitchen and they make it and then it gets shipped to the, you know, oh, your yes. your local grocery store. Right. So it's it's quick. It's, it, it's from the farm to your table within days at most. Yeah, yeah. and the flavor difference you can't yeah. even really describe it to people. And did I tell you the story about the Sonoma tomato? Did I, I don't think I told you that story when we met. Uh, so I moved to Sonoma, and Sonoma's a foodie town, right? Mm-hmm. It's all wine and food. So uh, it was probably like the second week or so there. And uh, everybody kept saying, no, you got to go to this Italian place, got to go to this Italian place, whatever. So it's this little beautiful stone building on the, the path in Sonoma, and um, – I didn't even know it was a restaurant to tell you it was a very unbecoming place uh, from the outside. It just looked like somebody's home. It had, um, it was like a cinder block Ivy uh, building with a back patio. So I go in there, it was like a Tuesday at four o'clock and there was nobody in there. And it was like the bartender and what must've been the owner. So I sit down and it was my first time having any type of meal in Sonoma. So the, uh, the owner comes over. I didn't know it was the owner at the time. He introduced himself and, uh, and he asked what we were going to have. And, you know, I told him what we were, we were looking at, obviously, some pasta or whatnot because it was an Italian place. And I asked, well, did you have anything you su- uh, could suggest? And he's like, I'll be right back. <laughs> so uh, so he comes out with a plate with a – there was nothing on it. It was a tomato <laughs> with a some tomato. olive oil with a couple anchovy pieces on it. That was it. And I honestly – I thought the guy was busting my chops. And I looked at him and I was like, what? <laughs> and he goes, look – I know this is crazy, but you're the only ones here, and we grow these right out back here, and you're going to find this. And since it's your first meal, because I told him it was my first meal out, uh, he mm-hmm. said, it's your first meal out in Sonoma. You have to try this. And he said, if you don't like it, I won't charge you for it. 
And uh, so he put the plate down, and it was one of the best things I ever had in my life. And he was uh-huh. laughing because he said he gets that, and that's why he did it. He said, I get this reaction all the time because you're not going to think that a little drizzle of olive oil in a tomato with just a touch of the anchovies is going to knock your socks off. And quite honestly, it was one of the best things I've ever tasted in my life. And if I could bite the sun on a beautiful day, that's what it would taste like. And, wow, uh, that's amazing. Yeah, to change my – that really like switched – I mean it, it was such a transcendent experience because it sounds like absolutely nothing. But, I, you know, it's a, again, you would have had to bend there. It's basic. But that's, yeah, it, it's good. Yeah, it was incredible. And that just sent me off on a whole nother like path there. And what I kept finding is this farm to table movement that's out there. Because, you know, you hear a lot about it and a lot about it. I think there's a lot of marketing behind it and there's a lot of lip service. But mm-hmm. if you can get to the authentic version of that, which you are, it, it changes the nature of the food. You know, it really does. And yeah. you need really less does. ingredients to make a larger palate and a larger impact in somebody's, uh, you know, experience. And that little, I mean, it was, a, you know, it was a nice, nice, nice tomato, but it was, it was a huge tomato too. It must have been the size of like a, a dog's head. Uh, yeah. It was just this beautiful red ripe tomato sliced, the kind of thin and kind of layered out uh, along the plate with just this beautiful olive oil. And I'm sure the olive oil was probably the same quality that you're using. It was like cold press, first press. Um, yeah. And so that type of experience is what you're trying to provide to people. It's like you just said that lady came in and she's like, I've never had a bad meal here. And she comes in what once a week and she gets four meals every week. Yeah. 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 So it's, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you think about, I mean, that type of dedication with your customer base really says a lot about the type of quality and the care that you're putting into your food. So, yeah, I, I enjoy I enjoy that part of it. I enjoy the part, you know, working with the farmers or going out there to the farmers market. Like that, that I enjoy. Not not everyone comes in saying I want uh, local, organic. I want to eat healthy. Like they don't always come in for that. Right, right. Um, and that's fine because I, you know, you're coming into my business. I'm happy that you're there. Whether you're there just to eat, you know, something for dinner, or you're really worried and you want it to be healthy or organic you know, whatever it might be, but I enjoy going to the farmers. I enjoy going to that. And I, and, um, you know, I enjoy that part of the business. So yeah. it's, it's really nice. So how do you find, how do you find the sources? Is it through word of mouth or is it literally you just going exploring at the farmer's market and meeting the farmers and maybe kind of getting into their head a little bit about how they produce the food and what, how available they are to you, that type of thing? Yeah, it was a little bit of both. When I first started, um, I, it was mostly word of mouth, like going out to farmers, um, farmers markets or, you know, they would say, oh, so-and-so has this, check them out. Um, and then now nowadays, like a lot of them are on Instagram, which I don't know how they have time to do that because <laughs> right. they, you know, they're on the farm all day. But there are some that have Instagram and I can reach out through there and say, you know, I'm looking for this. Do you have this available? Or some some places will send an email out to a local restaurant when they have extra crops right. available and say, you know, this is what I have for the week. Send me an email if you want that, and we'll have it ready for you. Wow. So that, that definitely is helpful for us. Sure, sure. Well, and that's technology, too, you know, helping a little bit as well, correct? You yes, know, yeah, that, that made it a lot easier. Yeah, the networking. I mean, it's, as much as sometimes I'm a Luddite, I use technology all day deeply, but sometimes you're just like, Dude, I've had enough, <laughs> but it mm-hmm. really helps, you know, uh, people kind of congregate and network, um, and it's expediting a lot of good things with the world. And so it's just another yeah. case of that. Um, so you have pretty much a full gamut of options. Do you have desserts there too, correct? I mean, I know you have the smoothies, but do you have any type of dessert items that are like you're kind of – because that's an item that I think I, I, just from a layman's standpoint would be very difficult to make really healthy. Yeah, we do our, our protein bites, which are like a big seller. Those are one of our big sellers, the protein bites. We have a couple different options, and they're pretty simple. I mean, they're oats, honey, peanut butter, chocolate chips, um, you know, uh, flaxseed, coconut, and very simple, but they're that sounds great. <laughs> they're addicting. You know, you put six in a container, and you, you can eat all six in a sitting. They're, they're that good. Right. Oh, that's awesome. Is that your recipe? All the stuff that we're eating basically at your place is, is yeah. through your brain and your experience, right? And your inspiration as well. So. Yeah. Yeah. We try. I mean, we, again, we 
try to use what we can that's local and um, in season, and we try to make new recipes based on that. And, um, you know, our chefs are, are really good at that as well. You know, we sit down and have a meeting and decide, you know, what, what, what can we use now and what, um, what would be something that people would enjoy. Right. Yeah, but that's, that's the fun of it, right? That's a creativity and knowing that you're doing something good for people, you know, as well as just an added bonus. Cause you, you really get to sharpen your, uh, ability as a cook, right. And a chef, uh, and, uh, and developing these uh, different profiles. So you must have like a huge uh, book of, I guess you're changing them every week, correct? Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. We're, um, again, it's pretty, we're pretty technological advanced. I guess you can say we have a lot on, um, it's all on, on a computer, uh, excuse me, on a computer. So, um, all our staff can log in at any time and they can add information or whatnot. And also it's on a TV screen in the back. Um, in the kitchen so when the chef is going through they can just um, pull up any recipe that we have oh, so you're not great. like flipping through a book you're not you know it's it's way easier to be on a computer but um you, well the database uh, nature of that yeah. really helps a lot that's awesome see and i'm not used to that i'm used to old school <laughs> everything's out of some greasy i do crusty. like reading a book i do i do like it and just when when you have so many different recipes like this and adding some every week sure it, it's which is way easier, less paper, and uh, less writing. Well, at some point, too, that almost belies that you should uh, publish a book and maybe do some videos, <laughs> you know, at some point. Yeah. Uh, because if you have such a diverse menu, share it, right? At some point, uh, you know, it'll it'll just help uh, kind of aggregate your, your business because that's a hard thing to do. It's hard enough to come up with 20 recipes that, you know, and you're changing your menu frequently. So that's a yeah. challenge, right? Yeah, it's it's a little bit of a challenge. You know, we, we do some repeats, like I said, we try to have some some of the specials some staples, right? A month, yeah, monthly. Um, but also we try to add new ones just so it, it keeps it fresh and keeps people coming back to try something new. Um, but yeah, we you know, we have thousands. I don't even know how many we have right now, but we have thousands of recipes that we right that we make. Um, and a lot of them are family recipes or um uh, one of my staff's family's recipes or something, you know, everyone comes together and kind of puts in some input and, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of a, a so cool you're, part you're, of it. you're well, pulling it from your history too, then too. And, and you're yeah. trying to make, so uh, like we were talking about, like, so I grew up in an Italian American family and we ate very unhealthy, uh, generally, uh, and you probably had the same, it's just the nature of that food. It's loaded with carbs and fats and it, it's beautiful food and it's a beautiful experience, but it's not good on your heart, uh, or your body. But, um, and, and we've kind of, we've taken the Mediterranean diet and bastardized it here. Don't you think? Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. But there are some good options. I mean, I'm sure you've had like beans and greens. Yep. Or, yep. Sure. You know, some of those things like the beans and the greens of that is like, it's, it's great for you. And, um, you know, even like chicken cutlets or, or whatnot, you know, they may be fried or you, you can bake them, but you know, you're getting the protein you need and, uh, you know, you have a little salad with it. Sure. Well, and, we've just distilled it down to like, that's what we've done. We've deep fried everything. We've breaded everything. We've added cheese, everything. And when you watch an authentic Italian, you know, uh, chef cook, a lot of that's not there. <laughs> yeah, it really isn't. Yeah. It, it's a little different than, like the Olive Garden, you know, where they <laughs> yeah. add a bunch of extra stuff to it. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's that not process. needed. Yeah, well, that's a thing, too. It's like the tomato. That's why I told you the tomato story, because in the end, that simplicity of that. And that's what I – the only thing I really took with me um, uh, cooking-wise from the Sonoma experience uh, when I was living there is that the best food I had was so simple, you know? Exactly. And it's, you know, the simple, simple but yet – amazing taste is yeah. you know what we go for and you know people sometimes um I, i've had people come in and say oh i switched over from so and so because the, the taste wasn't good and it wasn't flavorful enough and i i you know i say i think what they use also causes that you know if you use a frozen vegetable or you use um something that's not ripe or, or not, it, it's gonna make it's going to have a different taste. Um, so just 
what ingredients you use really makes a difference as well. Yeah, well, exactly. And I, I, people, it's well, another it's another thing that you hear all the time. You know, chefs will say, "Oh, we start with the best, highest quality ingredients," but I don't think a lot of them do. And if they do, that's wonderful. But it makes all the difference, right? It it really does, and I think that's why I I think that's why ours is better because of the ingredients that we use and you know to tell the truth right now the prices are very similar um not to give it away so other people do the same thing i do (laughs) but you know the the cost of eggs i mean we for example like we use organic brown eggs they're the same price as eggs at all these right now you know and um some of the organic produce that we have is is very similar to the same produce that they have at the store right so um you know now if ever is a good time for some people to start making that change for themselves you know going to the store and buying i just know this because we were at all these um but the brown eggs are cheaper than cheaper than the uh dozen wow, eggs and, really? and you know they're organic they're a little bit better for you um and same thing with some of the, the bell poppers and, and such yeah you can get those at a s- smaller price difference than what it used to be a couple of years ago so is that just do you think that's just a supply issue as far as uh the the, you know it's um just the amount that they're selling there's the quantity it's uh, increasing so they can lower the price a little bit or it's a little bit of everything i mean right now i know like the egg reason um for i don't know the the chickens that lay the brown eggs haven't been affected as much. Um, oh, okay. I didn't know that either. So, so they are a little bit cheaper. Um, but, yeah, I, I mean, it, it has always been more expensive to eat healthier and more expensive to get those healthier ingredients. And I think they're starting to come down a little bit or, or be manageable. Um, but it's still some of a challenge for people. You know, yeah, to, it is. And you're right. Stuff. Yeah, I can attest to that myself. It is more expensive, and but there are ways to do it. And, and you know, it's the old adage that when you eat healthier, you're not as hungry. Right. right? Mm-hmm. I, I think it's also difficult for people, too, because if you were to, you know, spend $5 at, at a store and purchase, you know, your lettuce and your tomato and your meats and your all this stuff, or you can go to McDonald's and spend $5 and the meal's ready for you, um, it's more convenient to go to McDonald's. It's, more con- it's, it's already prepared for you. If you don't know what to make, it's five dollars at McDonald's rather than going to a store and spending five dollars and getting all this healthy stuff. Or maybe it's cheap, but you don't know how to make it or you don't know what to do with it. So I think it's a little bit of uh, both, you know. Right, but that's maybe the... a little pricey or maybe not sure how to do things. Right, but that's what you're fulfilling with your business. Right there, right, right exactly. on, the, right on the. Yep. That's it, right there. You're gonna go to the store. You at listen. I make all of my meals at home now. Make them all from scratch, um, and it's a lot of. I mean, I've always made my own food uh, because that's how I grew up, and I'm a, I'm a decent cook. But now I have to. So that type of thing, it's it, it makes a lot of sense, and that's what a lot of Americans deal with. You know, your your life is a big crush of time, right? So you're just like health it should be your first priority and a lot of times it's not even close to your fifth priority because you know there's just things that have to happen during the course of the day to live a life and sadly food should be one of the top things but it's not and you'll just go to the drive through and get that quick food but it doesn't sustain you there's no real great nutritional value to it and oh if you do that repeatedly through the course of years you know you end up like me although you know there'll be complications it's just an inevitability of that type of lifestyle so what you're kind of combating with your business is the ability to get great food that's made uh, healthily it's sourced locally and it's competitive with that and you don't yep. have to go home and spend you know like i do you have to spend a, a half hour 45 minutes making it and a half hour cleaning it up and then 20 minutes eating it it's a whole process and it takes a lot of my exactly. time now so you, that's the you know what you're providing here is invaluable really right yeah it, it is it's it's um, a lot of work for people nowadays to, to actually go and purchase some stuff, bring it home, put it together, make it, eat it, up, and dude, get ready for the it, it drives day. me insane. Yeah, I'm just like, this is incredible. What choice do I have at this point? Really, I, there's you. There, you're a good choice now uh, for me, right? Yeah. That's a good option. And then there's a few other things, but it's hard. And I don't even trust going into the supermarket and getting the pre made meals now because I just don't. 
you know, I don't know where that lettuce was. And a lot of times you, you'll you get those and there'll be like something underneath. <laughs> That's like, yeah. but you know, it's been on the shelf a little too long and God only knows how they prioritize that. And those are probably what you're eating, correct? Right? Yep, exactly. So, <laughs> um, so throughout the course of your menu, you have everything from smoothies, salads, full meals. Now with the deli, you've included uh, sandwiches. Do you have any sides uh, there as well? You must. Well, we do um, per pound options as well online. So you can purchase um, like chicken per pound. You can purchase uh, filet per pound. You can purchase rice, vegetables per pound. We do a nice um, root veggie mix per pound. So um, a lot of that stuff is, um, you know, we get right from the farmer and we just, you know, uh, cook that up and throw it in a, in a container for you per pound. And you can take it home and you can eat it. As a side, you can either take it for a couple of sides or as your main dish. Um, right. Same thing like the filet. We we use a really t- filet mignon. It's super tender. Mm-hmm. Even if you freeze it and bring it out, it's it's amazing. Wow, that's great, man. Hey, there's a. I just uh, signed up a client uh, about a month ago. Did you ever hear of Davies Hillside Farms? Or Davies, Davies. Hillside Farm? Uh, the guy's name's Paul. He's chicken. A, yeah, he has beef chicken? and chicken po- and pork. Uh, okay. he's in Springville. Everything is, you know, no hormones. It's all organic. It's all grown, uh, right on his farm. Uh, I okay. should give you his information. Actually, he's a really, really good Absolutely. guy. And you guys are totally, on, you know, on the same page as far as that's his mission now, you know, in life is to make sure that the livestock he's raising is just no antibiotics, no hormones. It's all grass fed. It's just, you know, he's raising, <clears throat> he's raising them right. Uh, and he's doing it right. So yeah, I'll hook you up with him actually. Uh, oh, absolutely. Yeah, he might be somebody that you'd even just, even if you just talked to him for 10 minutes, just to kind of get on the same page with each other, it would be good. So awesome. Um, what else would you like to include about your business? Anything that we didn't touch upon or? Um, I, I, you know, the one thing that I think um, people don't really understand too when they're when they're doing all this is it's, the thing that people don't realize is that, you know, by you purchasing these things, you're not only helping, um, you know, my staff and, you know, help support their families or whatnot, but you're also supporting uh, local farmers and local businesses and local community because it's going right back into a community. You know, you purchasing that meal for was um, that money goes back to the local farmer that we use uh, and, and their family. Or, you know, we use a couple of small businesses that make like our breads and whatnot, and that goes back to them and their family. So by you purchasing from us, you're also going, you're investing in your community, you know? So that's something that people don't realize, but I think um, that's a really big, a big thing for me too, is, is you're investing in your community. Right. The funnel on that is huge, right? It's just a wide berth once you spend that money at your place because you're you're yeah. you're touching upon you, your employees, your supply chain. Those guys are all local and more than likely the localized nature of someone who's interested in running their business like that tends to propagate local, meaning that if I'm dealing with a farmer that's local, chances are he's dealing with his suppliers that are local. You know, so exactly, there's yeah. a the exponential growth on just spending that like dollar at your place trickles right down. Right into the, you know, the, the popular community. And that's, um, you know, I think that's really important for people too to understand because, yeah, you know, you're not, you're not purchasing something from online. That's not a, you know, it doesn't have to be out of the country. It could be even out of state. This stuff is in the state. You're, you're literally putting it in your backyard. Right. And, and most of the stuff is coming from your backyard. So, you know, for people to understand, I think it's, uh, I, I find that very, very interesting and important. That's huge. And thanks for bringing that up because I, I probably yeah. wouldn't have, and it should have been mentioned because that really is the nature of everything that I never, it's the nature of everything I try to do on the show. I mean, everything's about localized, you know, and it's about staycations, staycations, supporting local small businesses. And every time you, I mean, most, I, I don't. Th- I think the nature of uh, the ideology of a small business owner is that they want that, ideally, right? I mean, that's just the nature of anybody, exactly. whether yeah. it's food or clothes. I mean, you really just kind of want to help your community. And the way that you're doing it is a way that it's been done for centuries that we've lost sight of. 
uh, mm-hmm. in, in the last 60, 70 years. And I think it's coming back. Are you seeing, so you're in the industry and you know other people that are in the industry and you know the suppliers. Are you seeing a resurgence in a way that not just among the people that are interested in that, but the general public? Are you seeing like a, a mindset change? I think so. I I definitely know over um, the last couple of years, especially with COVID, you know, I talking to these farmers, there's been a lot of um, a lot of people purchasing like their CSA shares and, and purchasing local produce just because it's coming from local. Whether it's they're, they want to support them or they don't feel comfortable getting it from somewhere else. You know, that's just whatever, whatever the reason. There are more people um, wanting to do that, and and uh, that's that's a great thing. Well, that's about it for this episode of the Small Town Western New York Companion Podcast. Thanks for listening, and remember to support the small towns of Western New York in any way you can. They're full of great businesses and people who would love to see you in their towns. The Small Town Western New York Companion Podcast, the TV series, is a presentation of Discovering Western New York and AA Augustine Media Co. and can be found everywhere you listen to your favorite podcasts. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.